we want to find the maximum and minimum values of the function f of x comma y subject to the constraint 4x squared plus 5y squared equals 60. We'll solve this using Lagrange multipliers, and then we'll also look at the results graphically. The idea behind Lagrange multipliers is that a function f of x comma y will be maximized or minimized subject to the constraints given by g of x comma y when the gradient of f is equal to some multiple of the gradient of g, which means the gradient of f is equal to some constant lambda times the gradient of g. So the gradient of g and the gradient of f would be parallel when f is maximized or minimized under the constraints of g. And now from here we set up a system of equations given here using the components of these gradients. So the system of equations is going to be the partial of f with respect to x equals lambda times the partial of g with respect to x. Then we have the partial of f with respect to y equals lambda times the partial of g with respect to y. And then finally we have our constraint, g of x comma y equals zero. Let's first talk about our constraint. Notice how the given constraint is 4x squared plus 5y squared equals 60. We need to write this as a function, g of x comma y equals zero which means g of x comma y would be equal to 4x squared plus 5y squared minus 60 equals zero. Now that we have f and g, we can set up our system of equations. So again, our first equation is the partial of f with respect to x. We want to differentiate x squared y with respect to x, treating y as a constant, so we'd have 2xy equals lambda times the partial of g with respect to x. So we're treating y as a constant and differentiating with respect to x. Derivative of 4x squared would be 8x. So we have lambda times 8x. So here's our first equation. Our next equation is the partial of f with respect to y. So now we're treating x as a constant. The derivative of x squared y with respect to y would just be x squared. Then we have lambda times the partial of g with respect to y, which would just be 10y. And our third equation is g of x equals zero, so we have 4x squared plus 5y squared minus 60 equals zero. Now let's go ahead and solve these first two equations for lambda. So here, if we divide both sides by 8x, we'd have lambda equals 2xy divided by 8x. Simplifying, x over x simplifies to 1, 2 eighths simplifies to 1 fourth, so we have lambda equals y divided by 4. Here we would divide both sides by 10y to solve for lambda, so we have lambda equals x squared divided by 10y. From here, because we have two equations solved for lambda, we can perform substitution to determine the relationship between x and y. Again, if lambda equals y over four, and lambda also equals x squared over 10y, it follows that y over four must equal x squared over 10y. And now from here, we're going to cross multiply y times 10y must equal four times x squared. Let's do this on the next slide. So again, the cross products must be equal, so four times x squared, that'd be four x squared, must equal y times 10y, which is 10y squared. Let's go ahead and solve this equation for x. So let's divide both sides by four. So we have x squared is equal to 10 fourths y squared. And now let's take the square root of both sides of the equation to solve for x. So we'd have x equals well, the square root of four is two, and the square root of y squared is y, so we'd have plus or minus the square root of 10 divided by two times y. Now that we have a relationship between x and y, we'll go back to the constraint, which is also here, make a substitution for x or x squared, and then solve for y. So performing a substitution into the constraint, we'd have four times, well, we know x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 10 divided by two times y, but notice how we also know x squared is 10 fourths y squared. So let's go ahead and make this substitution. We'd have 10 fourths y squared 
plus 5y squared, and those add 60 to both sides, this is equal to 60. So simplifying here, we get 10y squared plus 5y squared, that's 15y squared, equals 60. Divide both sides by 15. We have y squared equals 4. Again, we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation. Notice how we get y equals plus or minus 2. Now that we know y is equal to plus or minus 2, we can also determine exact values for x. We would have x equals plus or minus the square root of 10 divided by 2 times y, which is plus or minus 2, and therefore x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 10. Which means to find the maximum min values of our function f of x comma y, we'll actually have to evaluate the function at four points because x can be both positive or negative square root 10 and y can be positive or negative 2. So using the function f of x comma y equals x squared y, we need to find f of positive square root 10 comma positive 2, f of positive square root 10 comma negative 2, f of negative square root 10 comma positive 2, and f of negative square root 10 comma negative 2. Again, this is because we determined x is equal to plus or minus square root 10 and y is equal to plus or minus 2. So let's go ahead and determine these function values. We have the square root of 10 squared times 2, that would be 10 times 2, or 20. Here we would have the square root of 10 squared times negative 2, which would be 10 times negative 2, or negative 20. And here we'd have negative square root 10 squared times 2. Here we're squaring a negative, so it is positive 10 times 2, or 20. And here we have negative square root 10 squared times negative 2, which is 10 times negative 2, or negative 20. So notice how the largest value we see is positive 20, which is the maximum function value under the constraint, and the smallest value we see is negative 20, which is the minimum function value given the constraint. So going back to our question, the maximum value is 20, the minimum value is negative 20. Now before we go, let's look at this graphically. We're going to graph f of x comma y and g of x comma y in space. So here we see the graph of f in green or blue, and here we see the graph of g in yellow. So again, we're trying to maximize the green function under the constraint of the yellow function, and notice how the two red points we found represent the maximum values here. Oops and here, and down here toward the bottom we see the two minimum values, again under the constraint, one here, or there it is, one here, and one on the other side here. That's why we had to evaluate the function at four points, not just two. I hope you found this helpful.